Good morning. Thank you to the NEA for invite. Oh, just a minute. Fix this. Thank you to the NEA for inviting me here to speak today, and to the president, Lily Eskelson Garcia, for your unwavering commitment to teachers, students, and public education. I would just like to say that I am so grateful to be a member of the NEA. As a teacher, I am one of those people who is so emotionally invested in the success of my students that I sometimes forget that I deserve the respect and dignity of being a professional. I am that teacher who stays after and comes in early. I am that teacher who volunteers to be a part of any initiative that improves outcomes for students. I do whatever is asked of me because I believe that is what good teachers do. But I need to be protected. That altruistic character trait that all teachers possessed is oftentimes exploited. If we challenge the status quo and advocate for teachers, it's sometimes seen as advocating against students. I am able to soar because my union keeps me grounded. They ensure that I am treated like the professional that I am and my creativity is not stifled by mandates. My union advocates on my behalf and creates a structure that protects me from myself. Thank you to the CEA members and the Connecticut delegation. <laughs> President Sheila Cohen, who has been supportive of me throughout this entire process, and to Kevin Egan and my colleagues from the Waterbury Teachers Association, I am so honored and humbled to be counted among such an amazing group of educators. Today, I would like to ask you a question. What comes out of a school district that is identified as underperforming, where 100% of the students receive free or reduced lunch? What comes out of a destructive neighborhood where multiple generations of the same family live in poverty, succumb to addiction, and are surrounded by persistent violence? What comes out of a household where there is no discussion of college or higher education? And finally, what comes out of the cycle of teenage pregnancy where a grandmother, mother, and daughter are all parents before the age of 18? A National Teacher of the Year. Why? Why? Because teachers step in and fill in all of those gaps. As uncomfortable it is for me to make that declaration, I share this with you today because I know that the NEA and its members distinguish ourselves from other educational organizations in the firm belief that all students in America, regardless of family income or where they live, deserve a high quality education. My personal experiences are the greatest contributing factor to my success as a teacher. These experiences have shaped my views and continue to influence my teaching style. Being the first in my family to attend college fully helps me appreciate the power and importance of education. As a child, everything I learned about school, I learned at school. Teachers provided me with the support and encouragement to be a student. Teachers exposed me to a different world by letting me borrow books to read at home and sharing stories about their college experiences. 
teachers challenge me to dream bigger and imagine myself in a different set of circumstances. I was oblivious to the opportunities that existed outside of the projects where I grew up, but my teachers vicariously ignited a passion in me. Despite being surrounded by poverty, drugs, and violence, my teachers made me believe I was college material and planted a seed of hope. After becoming a teenage mom, I almost gave up my dreams completely, but teachers showed me the many options that were still available if I continued my education. As a teacher, my own life is a constant reminder that students come from different circumstances and experiences and our responses to those differences is as critical to them as the air they breathe for sustaining life. Teaching is not a job, it is a calling. I strive to meet students where they are and not dwell on where they should be. I remember myself at various points in my journey and I imagine how hopeless I must have seemed to the teachers who continued to work with me. They saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. And because of this, I celebrate every milestone, no matter how big or small, and support my students through the learning process. Because I know that it's not where you begin that determines your outcome. Working in a large urban public school district with a widely diverse population, I see so many things that fall outside of traditional teaching responsibilities. But I also know that for many of my students, I am their only hope. It is those times that I am transformed into an advisor, a counselor, a confidant, and a protector. I have made the commitment to help my students in the same way that so many of my teachers made for me. I identify with my students because I am my students. I know what it feels like when every statistic and everything around you is an indicator or a predictor of failure. I am my students. I am your students. Many of the students who attend our schools come from communities and families just like mine. Yet teachers make all the difference in these situations. I carry my experiences as a reminder of this, of how important we are in the lives of students. It's not only about what we teach, it's about all those intangibles. If you ever question the work that you do or the impact you have on kids, Think of me. In the last decade, so much has been said and done to diminish the level of respect, worth, and dignity the public places on this profession. My teachers left such an impression on me, and I knew that I too wanted to be a teacher. Teaching is a noble profession, and we have to bring that professionalism back. We must take back the narrative and ensure that this is the message we are sending at all times. When students look at us, they see role models and someone they can be proud of. The field has evolved, and we must evolve. Be the change you wish to see. Build capacity in yourself, and help to build capacity in your colleagues. Bring forth fresh ideas and continue to challenge yourself. We are responsible for the future, and our classrooms are shining examples of the promise the future holds. Our words and our actions should always support sustained student success. Set high expectations for your students, but even higher expectations for yourself. Remember why you became a teacher and use that to re-energize you and elevate this profession. I have an absolute passion for the work that I do. Figure out a way to capture the energy and excitement that is palpable at this convention 
and bring it back to your schools. Every interaction with the teacher should leave students inspired, encouraged, and possibly influenced to become a teacher. We also must work within our districts to build a culture that values and supports a diverse student population. Every student in your class should feel included in the conversation and know that they have a human and civil right to a quality education that develops their potential, independence, and character no matter where they come from. That is the charge of all teachers, and that is the mission of the NEA. As educators, we must work together to, to find ways to empower students intellectually, socially, and emotionally. We should use their demographics and cultural experiences as a way to impart knowledge and skills and begin to change attitudes, not let them be reminders of the obstacles that monopolize their daily lives. All students should feel like exceptional individuals with unlimited potential, and our job is to unlock that potential. Every student in every class should feel valued, respected, and represented we could all learn something from each other. In order to achieve more collective growth of us as a society, all children must feel like they make a valuable contribution and respect the contributions of others, even if they are different. Students cannot be expected to exhibit tolerance, acceptance, or democratic behaviors in the real world, yet never see those actions modeled in their schools. We must explore creative and inclusive ways of reaching students and teaching them how to demonstrate empathy and compassion for others. Every child is entitled to an educational experience that is rich, robust, and reflective of their personal journey and cultural experiences. How do we make that happen? It's very simple. Show them that you care. I don't remember much about the lessons that I was taught in school, but I remember vividly the teachers who made me feel like they cared about and made a personal investment in me. They cared about my success and gave me all they had, even though it fell outside of their job responsibilities. Students should see their teachers as someone who cares about their families and their communities someone who values their academic success and their personal growth, someone who takes the time to learn their stories and understands their journeys. We are the people who ignite passions in students and help them fulfill their obligations to improve the human condition. It is the connections that we make with students that makes everything else worthwhile. Say something encouraging. Greet your students with a smile. Invest the extra time. Go the extra mile. Leave a significant, inspirational footprint. Show them that you care. I know what happens when a teacher chooses to ignore the obstacles and focus on the dream. I am what happens when a teacher chooses to ignore the obstacles and focus on a dream. I have made several trips to Washington, D.C. in the last few weeks, and I have visited the Martin Luther King Memorial every time. Something about that structure, standing so boldly in the National Park, draws me in. The theme of this monument, out of a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. I don't know what drew you into this profession, but for me, it was the knowledge that teachers have the transformative power to save lives. We are instruments of inspiration. Teachers are that stone of hope. A profound trust exists between us and our students. 
We have an enduring presence and make a lasting impact. Teachers are not visitors in the lives of their students. You are somebody's hero, and you don't even know it. Don't take that responsibility lightly. We often hear that teachers reserve their best lessons for when they are being observed. Remember that every day you are being observed by your students. Be exemplary. Continue growing, guiding, and loving your students because you may have the next president, Supreme Court Justice, doctor, lawyer, business owner, performer, volunteer, activist, or National Teacher of the Year sitting in your classroom. Thank you so much to the NEA for uniting members and nation to fulfill the promise of public education. And thank you to teachers everywhere.